Well, it's that Lou Reed link time, and Pat and I have been fighting over who's going to do it, but I won hands down. So we asked Lou Reed about his new album, New York, to find out a bit more about it. I don't want to seem glib, but when I was writing these things out, these things, these songs out for New York, I noticed there was a certain direction that the lyrics were going in. And I called Mike up and I said, you want to come on down here and play a little bit? I want to show you something. So he came down. I said, uh, I said, no matter what I do, every time I sit down and write a song, it seems to turn out this way in a certain direction having to do about New York. Um, what do you think? And he said, well, that's what eight years of Reagan will do. I feel exactly the way you feel. Let's go for it. So that's what I did. It's not as though I had an enormous amount of choice anyway, because every time I sat down to write a song, it had to do with what I perceive as a terrible, terrible situation, which is like symbolized in the city of New York. But as we all know, what happens in the big cities eventually spreads. You know, we've, we've seen this happen over the years, and it seems a shame to have to wait until the kids of the rich people are dropping dead before people start saying, wow, it might have been a good idea to do something about AIDS, or birth control might be a good idea, or pro-choice is really not a bad thing to think about. And all these things being not only really ignored right now, but they're going in the opposite direction. And I'm uh, horrified by it. Well, lyrically, I've always been influenced by a man named Delmore Schwartz, who I studied with in college who, in certain instances, could do a lot with really simple words. He, uh, he's the first person I hear, heard do the, have, have this great expression, give me enough hope and I'll hang myself. And uh, even paranoids have enemies. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them think. And then there was Raymond Chandler. I always got a kick out of, I love Raymond, who doesn't, right? Love Raymond Chandler, but had this great line, uh, I thought, paraphrasing, Brad, maybe it's not verbatim, that blonde was as pleasant as a split lip, or that bodyguard was so big it looked like he could hold me in the palm of his hand, like, which is how I felt, by the way, when I was in the elevator with Mike Tyson once, who lives at my building, but that's another story that I don't even want to get into, but that kind of use of words is what I've always been interested in writing because it's a rock and roll song. It's really relatively short. You can't have too many characters in it. So the image you give somebody has got to hit them so quickly that they can see it. And the whole thing about the New York album and the writing of it was the focus and, you know, the, being able to focus on what I wanted you to see. It's really fascinating to record in New York. You hear what I mean? See, I miss that, that there's a little something. Is it something I said? <laughs> anyway, I mean, I've recorded like in Montserrat. I've recorded um, out of New York. Not really that much, but I have recorded out of New York. I like to record in New York because there's something about it that energizes the record that puts an edge to the record somehow that I mean there's a lot of pressure when recording in New York um, just getting to the studio can be an adventure whereas other places you know you can just concentrate on your work but in New York just going to the studio you don't know what happens for instance the very first day in the studio getting things set up we just started recording all of a sudden the lights flicker and the tape machines stop we worried our tape had been injured it hadn't been we said, what's going on? They said, well, there's an electrical uh, problem in the whole city. Now, I remember years ago, literally when the Street Hassle album was made, when there was a complete brownout in New York, and the tape had also gotten stuck, but it hadn't been stretched, and that's when people were running around the city and liberating TV sets and things like this. And that. It was hilarious. 